Hi everyone! So I want to do this video today because this month on January 20th is officially three years since I enlisted in the military and this has been one of the biggest decisions I've ever made in my life and I always say that being in the military is it's exhilarating. So I want to do this video and see additionally if maybe I can convince some of you to consider joining as well. So stay tuned. I currently serve in the New York Guard as an E4 specialist and my role is records specialist. So I help manage records for soldiers, make IDs, and sometimes I've also helped out with public affairs. The New York Guard is a state defense force and primarily its role is to augment the other military forces of New York. So we've got the New York Air National Guard, New York Army National Guard, Naval Militia, and then I believe there's also the Coast Guard and the Marine Corps Reserve. So I'm actually a third generation to serve in the military. I come from a really big military family. My mom was Air Force, her dad was the Navy and he also fought in Vietnam and then my mom's brother so my uncle Navy my aunt army who met her husband army my cousin National Guard my stepdad army and I also think possibly that his dad served in the military and then on my dad's side his dad and his five brothers so all six brothers fought in World War II so a lot of military people in the family so it was interesting because when I was in high school, I was getting ready for college and my dad my whole life had been college, 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 college. And when I was getting close to that time, my mom was kind of sliding me pamphlets for the for the Air Force and trying to kind of get me to go that route. And at that point, I really wanted to be a pharmacist. So I kept telling my mom, you know, I, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do both, but I just, you know, I kind of feel like this is the path I want to go. And I always told her that if I had a clone or a twin or something like that, then, you know, I would totally do both worlds and, and work and then also serve in the military. But I just, I couldn't see how I could make it happen at that point. So years later, I graduated from college, I was working, and then I I think I had gotten married and I just, I couldn't get the military out of my mind. I just, I don't know, like I, I had already kind of ruled out for my mom that I, I, about serving, so she had kind of stopped talking about it for a long time uh, or just didn't bring it up. And, but I just, I never did give it up. I always was researching it. I was always thinking about, you know, how can I serve? How can I make this work? There's got to be a way. And all the time I would see those commercials from like the National Guard and, and the Army, all these different commercials, you know, serving. And especially ever since I was a kid, you know, all the different commercials talking about you know, what you could do for a country. And um, yeah, so... Ultimately, I started looking into, since I live in New Jersey, so again, it's a weird thing because I serve in New York, but I live in New Jersey. So I'll, I'll explain that. So initially, I started looking at the New Jersey Air National Guard. So I looked at that for maybe a couple years and I kept researching it and I reached out a couple times to recruiters, but I just, I don't know, I couldn't 100% make I guess the fit for myself. There were a couple of things that were just holding me back. I was so close. I was like 95% there, but I just, I don't know. I, I just, something, I just kept looking. I just kept searching and I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't fully in. And then all of a sudden I was just looking through the internet. I think it was on Instagram and I saw a post that led me to the New York Guard. So one of the things that I love about the New York Guard is that it is mostly volunteer. So we're volunteer unless we're in paid state active duty. And then at that point we get paid by the state. So one of the biggest things I love about this is I love to volunteer. Volunteering is one of my greatest passions. So once I found this, and I, I wasn't, the thing is, I wasn't really looking for the money. I, I already had my career pretty much set up and I just, I wanted to do, do something for my country. I just wanted to do something to help to serve in any capacity. And I even told my recruiter, I said, you know, I can clean the latrines, I can, I can cook, I can do anything you need to, me to do. I know how to shoot a gun, whatever you need, I can do it. Um, 
one of the things that I learned later about the Nierkar, we do not bear arms. We did previously, uh, back in the beginning stages, uh, the Nierkar has been around for over a hundred years now. Uh, but right now we do not bear arms, so uh, no guns. I believe there's a pistol team, but uh, otherwise, uh, nothing besides that. Near Guard follows army regulation. So the way that I usually describe it to people is that there's the army, then there's like the, for the New York, there's the New York Army National Guard, and then there's the New York Guard. So when we get activated, we sort of fall in under the Army National Guard or the New York Air National Guard to kind of follow their lead and just assist and augment wherever needed from there. We're mostly for natural disasters and something like September 11th, Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Maria, those are all things that New York Guard has been a part of. And during my time, I've actually been able to be a part of, I think three or four activations now. So I enlisted January 20th of 2017, and then I was sworn in March 17th of 2018. I completed my entry training later that year. And entry training is a condensed one week training where you have book work that you have to do so you can um, pass the I think it was like a hundred question test that you have to take at the end of the week. You have um, a lot of marching that you have to do and learn and then there's definitely the major physical aspect of it um, to make sure that you are fit and ready. Um, not everyone will make it through the training um, so definitely the more prepared that you can be for that the better. It's definitely more lax than the Army or the National Guard would be. And then one of the part of um, one of the parts of why it's uh, shortened is that we don't have weapons training. So that's one of the biggest differences. But don't think that it's just going to be a cakewalk because it will not be. I think my dad was surprised at first when I told him that I was joining the military. But when he came to my graduation, one of the drill sergeants told him that I was tougher than some of the guys that were out there and I don't think my dad ever looked so proud in my entire life. I mean, he raised, I was very close in age with, um, I've got one sister and two brothers. My one brother, we're only a year and a half apart. And so for our whole lives, we've always been so competitive. And so my dad had us always out there together, shoveling snow or, digging a French drain or playing sports or whatever it was, we were always super competitive with one another. So I was definitely a little bit of a tomboy growing up and I was happy that I was able to hold my own out there and get the push-ups done. And the, the one thing I didn't expect was the flutter kicks. <laughs> so um, I definitely, had I known, I would have prepared for the flutter kicks a little bit more. Um, but my abs are, are pretty strong, so I did pretty well and I was pretty happy about that. We also have, um, annually, we have a one week training every single year that needs to be completed. So to keep your attendance up, you have to maintain um, going to your ordinary drill schedules that occur monthly, and then also the one week annual training that you have to attend. And then along with that, um, with the one weekend a month, there are also admin nights. So you might have um, teleconference calls during that time. Uh, for myself, I have administrative work that I can can complete um, remotely and other units uh, may actually be going to their different locations uh, which can be dispersed in locations across New York. With the New York Guard, we're able to accept soldiers that are older than would typically be in the regular Army or the Army National Guard. Um, we also have more lax um, weight restrictions, but we still do have our weight restrictions, um, age restrictions, and as well as you still have to be able to uh, complete the certain levels of physical fitness testing. So for the New York Guard, there is a three year time commitment. This will be less than the Army or what the Army National Guard would typically have. Uh, I think this is a really great way for if, um, say for young people, if you're trying to figure out if the military is right for you, this is an excellent way to get your, your feet wet, to figure out what the military lifestyle is like, and definitely to start learning some of the things that you would need to learn in the military. One of the things I really love about the military is that it's like, 
it's almost like a whole new world. There's a, w a different way that everyone speaks. There's a different way that you're supposed to walk. There's so many different rules and regulations about what you can wear, how you can dress. Um, definitely this is not something that I would be dressing like in uniform and also with the uniform when it can be worn and which uniform can be worn. The second I got into the New York Guard, I was just sort of mesmerized by everything and just look, there's so much to learn. I still don't know everything, but um, I'm trying to absorb everything that I can like a sponge and I'm just loving every minute of it. It's been such an awesome experience. I can't say that it's been an easy experience because you will get pushed. Um, you know, they want to make sure that you are the best you can be. They want to make sure that you can be able to serve the state when it's in its time of need. So you need to be in a, at a certain level of, of physical fitness. Um, you have to have the mental capacity to be able to perform the duty that set out in front of you. And you have to be able to work with one another. So those are some of the characteristics that you should have if you want to be a part of something like this and I highly encourage you to consider it. One of my favorite parts about being a part of the New York Guard is that we have soldiers from all walks of life. We have prior service, we have teachers, we have doctors, we have like a, a neurosurgeon, we've got lawyers, we have um, auto technicians, we have postal workers. We have all kinds of people from all walks of life. I was able to meet a lot of the other New York military forces through my activations and so I was able to work with the Army National Guard a few different times. I worked with the Air National Guard out in Syracuse and I was actually able to meet their, by chance, their major general so that was definitely really exciting. I worked with a Lance Corporal out of the Marine Corps Reserve who had previously served in the Marine Corps and just wanted to keep on serving in a different capacity. I worked with a member, I worked with a few members of the Naval Militia and one of which was a Master Chief who had over 30 years of prior service in the Navy. So one of the greatest things is that all of these people have so much to bring to the table and so much that they can teach us and I just try to take in everything that I can and I love hearing about their experiences. I've met soldiers who drove tanks, I've met soldiers who were pyrotechnics on the side or did gymnastics or I hear about their families and different organizations that they're a part of. and it's just been such an incredible experience and I just cannot speak more highly of it. So I definitely encourage any of you, it's a brand new year and January is when I finally got there and got my enlistment paperwork done. So I highly encourage you. One thing the New York Guard can provide to you that your civilian occupation might not necessarily be able to, you can get medical training, you can get training on chainsaws, forklift, uh, all different types of technology. So they have, they're always coming out with something new and a different type of training that they can um, be able to have the soldiers be ready for all different types of assistance. So the reason I didn't find this in New Jersey is because New Jersey actually doesn't have a state defense force like this. I believe way, way, way back, I think that we did, but uh, this type of state defense force is only in about half the states in America. Uh, Pennsylvania does not have one, uh, so New York is where I serve. Another thing about the State Defense Force is that the governor has the ultimate say and it would not be the president. So for the normal Army National Guard, it would be the president that has the ultimate say. And the other thing is that the Army, the National Guard, they can all go overseas, whereas the State Guard only stays and defends the state. So for New York, we do not serve outside of New York. We only serve within New York when we're in active duty. We're also called Minutemen, so we're meant to be ready on a moment's notice. For my record right now, and one of my suggestions to be uh, ready for active duty at all times. Usually I can get, I can be told about my orders and then on site the next day within a 12 hour period is, is how I've done it. Um, so making sure that you have everything that you need 
um, ready to go at a moment's notice and that you can kind of drop everything that you have going on, notify work, notify your family, get all that set up and ready to go for a week a month you don't even really usually know how long you could potentially be staying um but to be ready for that um you got to be ready as a moment's notice there was one thing in particular that happened during hurricane sandy that actually made me believe that i could potentially join the military so hurricane sandy hit october 29th of 2012 and i remember the october 29th date because that was my husband's and my anniversary dating anniversary so at that point we were dating we we're not engaged or married at that point so my husband at that point was living in hoboken and i was living about an hour and a half south west of that a couple days after hurricane sandy it was halloween and my husband was basically stranded in Hoboken. He didn't have a vehicle up there. A lot of people that live in the city type area just use public transportation. But at that point, there was no electricity, no running water, and the whole city was just kind of stranded. So I prepared to go up there and retrieve my husband and then bring him back to his parents' house. So once I got into the Hoboken area, it was really creepy. There were no lights anywhere. There were cobwebs all over the place because it was Halloween, so lots of Halloween decorations. And then the next thing I know, I saw the National Guard. So this is the first time I've ever seen any type of military personnel in active duty. I'd never seen it before and I was a little bit startled and I kind of thought to myself, oh my gosh, wow, this must be serious. I've never seen soldiers um, in action before. So uh, as I was going through Hope, before that even happened, there was a um, there, there was so much flooding going on. The streets, a lot of them were closed off. And there was one area when you're first getting to Hoboken before I even got to that part where um, after you get, actually it's kind of underneath, there's this one, um, there's this one kind of like a bridge um, where it says Hoboken on it. So when you first get into there, and underneath, it was like a lake under there. And there are pictures on the internet from how bad it was. It was the creepiest thing. I saw um, vehicles just kind of floating around the water and I knew that this was the path I needed to take in order to get to my husband. So I would have to forge through the water. So I kind of waited to see if vehicles were able to make it past first um, to see if I might be able to make it through. So it's kind of trying to judge the depth of the water. And the one thing I knew somehow from over the years was that if you go through water like that, you have to make sure that you do not let your foot off the gas. Otherwise, I think the water gets into the exhaust or something like that. So I made sure that um, the vehicle in front of me was able to get through the water and then I left enough space so that way I kind of just forged through and not let off the gas. So I was able to successfully get through and my vehicle was not damaged, thank goodness. Um, and then I was able to go through the city and then get to my husband. It kind of stuck with me for a long time, that image of the National Guard in action and just that night, it just kind of, I mean, it gave me chills a little bit just because of how creepy the city looked with just all the lights out and um, none of the stores having power and um, there, there is, it was frantic. It, it was, um, there was a lot of chill in the air. A lot of people were freaked out and um, it was also cold at that period of time. But one thing I kind of realized a few years after that was that looking back that I, I saw these soldiers do that and I was thinking to myself, well, wait a second, maybe I could do something like that too because I was brave enough to get through that what looked like a pond type of a thing, get to my husband, go through all these different flood areas, all the, the trees that were knocked down. So maybe I would be brave enough to do something like joining the military and helping others in that type of a situation. 
And that's exactly what I'm doing now. In a couple of the activations I've done, snowstorms, I've done um, a windstorm, which, act which also has severe flooding. Some of the flooding um, that happened in one of the activations looked actually worse than what I saw in that Hoboken area. So I, I just, I think it's interesting. So you might kind of want to look at what you're doing in your life or maybe some of the things that you've experienced and kind of consider that maybe you have that bravery aspect of yourself too where you could consider doing something like this and trying to help others in that type of way. So definitely something to consider. If you watch this video and you do think about joining, definitely think about mentioning my name and so if you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, we'll see you soon.